In today's episode of the Motorhome Map podcast, we unpack the changes in getting motorhome finance in light of the changing economics of buying a leisure vehicle. And in the news, an all new hydrogen canal boat has been out on the water. Mm. And we answer your questions on using AdBlue and a question from New Zealand on keeping a toilet fresh with biochemical. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. And remember to follow on your favourite podcast app and subscribe to us on YouTube. Sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. OK, in the news, the NEC Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show, Matt, 2024. It's the 13th to the 18th of February. And of course, if they come along on Valentine's Day, uh, you'll give a free kiss and a sticker. You keep promising the kiss. The sticker, yes. So if you're a listener to the podcast, come and grab one of these. He's got Keith donning one very proudly here on his right breast. He's very proud of that. I'll put one on the other breast in a minute. Um, but quite funny. So come and grab a listening to the Motorhome Map podcast sticker. You can be a sticker nicker, as Keith would say. Uh, it's the show runs from the 13th to the 18th of February. Yes, it is Valentine's Day. So I'm on the Leisure Vehicle Advice Centre throughout the show. Stand 3120 every day. And that leisure shop and Maypole is there at the show. Stand 1062. Absolutely, yeah. So if you need covers, electrical stuff... Handy Maypole products for your motorhome, caravan, campervan. Go and see the guys on stand 1062. And also that leisure shopper there with Crespo and Bowcamp. Stand 4180. Some of our favourite outdoor living accessories and essentials. So Matt's going to be there. There's plenty to see. There's plenty to the buy. Be a sticker nicker. Get your sticker. And put it on any part of your body you so desire. Take a photograph of it. And you never know, we might give you a prize if it's interesting or daring enough. Really? Yeah. What are you putting yours? <laughs> so you can, you, you can... It's a secret. Yeah, I would keep it a secret as well. <laughs> you can get tickets for the show at ccmshow.co.uk. And if you use the code MATT just M-A-T-T, you can save a few pence on your ticket price. Fantastic. Now, in the news, Bramble Energy is an innovator and disruptor in fuel cell technology. They've achieved a milestone in marine history. Now, I know it's a boat, but these things do feed through to uh, the motorhome and caravanning pastime uh, as well. That milestone in marine history is launching, get it, the world's first the hydrogen electric boat. It's powered by a printed circuit board fuel cell, so it's burning hydrogen and of course the emission from burning hydrogen is water water so, so the question is Matt is how far can it get 600 miles apparently that, according to the news article we read that's a long way isn't it? it is a long way mm. I mean at four miles per hour and that's 600 miles with 14 kilograms of hydrogen uh, on board so See, that's not very much it's not very much at all is it that's like a big gas bottle so I presume the hydrogen is liquefied yes I'm guessing so yeah, under pressure. And, then, and you burn it as a gas yeah and additional power being supplied by solar panels on the boat's roof um, to the 22 kilowatt hour battery system. That's a big battery. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, so there we are. So, yeah, this is not exactly going to be directly implementable into a VW camper van, that's for sure. Uh, that's for sure. But, yeah, certainly it's an interesting... Uh, development. This was on vanlifematters.co.uk, which is a great news portal, by the way. It's really good. Uh, so interesting to see. Hydrogen, will it be part of our future? And the key here is that old-time hydrogen vehicles, even the experimental buses, had a huge balloon on the top to store the hydrogen in, didn't they? <laughs> they well, did, that's, yeah. that's all gone now. You know, It's liquefied. It's in a tank, and you can treat it like you do practically any other fuel. Hydrogen, of course, highly uh, combustible. But as I said before, the emissions, it's just water. Well, as we were talking last week about Caller's vision for not burning stuff and using their renewable gas, this is another alternative. And, of course, the, the issue is infrastructure, isn't it? So where can you go and top up your hydrogen gas bottle, uh, you know, your hydrogen cell? Uh, that's a problem. But it's, this is a journey we're on, and I think it's a fascinating mm. time to see how innovators and small businesses create products like this. I don't know how big Bramble Energy are, but I get the impression they're a small uh, risk taker and an innovator, and they're an entrepreneurial business. And when we were back at the Dusseldorf show last year, it was the smaller businesses that we saw taking the risks and being innovative. Uh, and I, the bigger manufacturers just weren't in the game. No. And I suspect what we'll see is these smaller innovators making these changes, creating this opportunity, 
and then a big player will come in and sweep them up and off we go mainstream yeah and in the last couple of weeks uh, of course in the news there's been a large deposit of, of natural hydrogen found in france the thing with hydrogen has always been the manufacturer of it but if you can get it out of the ground uh, as hydrogen that saves you a lot of money and uh, like i say they found a big deposit in france interesting mm. that's the french government rubbing their hands together then Zut <laughs> <laughs> we have the gas. <laughs> it's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And it's brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now, let's uh, get into the main part, the main topic of this week's podcast it's to do with motorhome finance and uh, this has been big news the last few years because interest rates shot up didn't they uh, getting finance became more difficult people then had to instead of taking a 15 year loan had to take a 20 year loan so you were paying more for longer or paying the same amount per month but mm. adding five years to it and paying longer and so we're going to be talking about that today and you've got somebody uh, an expert that you can get all the latest from haven't yeah, you? Yeah absolutely it's all about the money yeah so I thought I would go to an expert and a specialist supplier to the leisure vehicle market and uh, creative funding solutions supply finance to uh, motorhome buyers caravan buyers horse box buyers and they, in fact they're in a range of marketplaces they're in trucks and lorries as well so transport is their specialist area and steve blake is their sales director and has a real focus on the motorhome industry and a real insight into what's been changing and as you say prices have been going up interest rates have been going up there's a great phrase is for many of us there's too much month at the end of the money so how do we afford this stuff you know 500 pounds a month used to get you sort of 40 grand does it still do that and is 40 grand enough if the motorhome's now 80 grand where it was 60 you're putting a lot more into it and that stretch is a big one not everyone's got the deposit so how has the motorhome finance industry been responding to this change and what are they proposing to do that's different steve how is the finance industry responding to the current market well it's an interesting situation obviously we've got this increase in vehicle prices now for some time leisure vehicle industry has seen huge increases in yeah. in the cost of units for some time now as i'm sure the consumer is is well aware of um funders have responded um we have got longer term finance options available now to what we would have had say 12 18 months ago okay. which can make the monthly budget a little more affordable particularly on some of these you know six figure very expensive motorhomes um whereas in the past the maximum uh, period someone could take finance over as a consumer would be in a 10 year term uh, 120 month finance on motorhomes we now have up to 50 year terms which clearly takes the pain to some extent out of the monthly rental yep. um, for the customer um, on camper vans we've also got extended periods as well because you know, new camper vans you know you can see 70 80 thousand pounds plus for for campers now That's as true. well so yeah. they're not uh, they're not cheap assets by any means so what term can you borrow over for a camper van conversion we've got 150 months um so that's 12 and a half years available not quite as long as motomes which is as i say 15 but it's it's another two and a half years on top of what we had before which can you know with some people that could be make or break from a budget point of view yeah um, so that will impact the monthly payment yes i bring it down yes of course, it means you're going to pay more over the term, doesn't it? If you ran it for the whole term, which few of us do. It would indeed. I think the situation with most customers is that they are monthly payment driven, like we are in yeah. life on mortgages well, course, or whatever yeah. it may be. You know, you budget on a monthly basis. But, you know, the longer you borrow money for, yes, the, the higher interest, is, the more yeah. expensive it is in, in the uh, when you're looking at the total amount payable. and. Uh, that goes for any finance product, yeah. So the fact you're able to, and you're happy as an industry, extending the term means you must be must be confident about the residual value of the motorhome. When it turns 15 years old, there is still a value to it. Um, is there, there must be a good appetite then for the motorhome uh, as a product still from your uh, industry. A hundred percent. I think if you look at residual values, it may be helped um, by COVID even more so, but the residual values on leisure vehicles has remained extremely strong yeah. for a long time now. And of uh, course, we're not just faced with the windscreen prices going up, 
Yeah, and we've seen significant increases, 30 40% Massively. in some yep. cases. Yep. But obviously, interest rates have been going up. I mean, since we last met you back in October 23, yes. we're recording this now in February 24, yep. uh, just before the Caravan Camping Motorhome Show at the NEC, uh, which is this week. And when we, were, when we last met, interest rates were on the climb. Yep. They're now sort of coming back down again. Yeah, the, the cost of funds has definitely sort of softened. Um, we obviously had that long run of uh, Bank of England um, hikes. Yeah. Um, I think this year the general consensus or the general opinion is that we'll see a um, slightly more stable climate. Um, so rates will probably stay where where they are now. You would have thought. I mean, who can who can predict in the longer term? Well, but it's an it's an election year as well, which often uh, yeah. um, suggests that there there's not going to be too much activity, which is going to be hurtful to the uh, consumer. Let's should, hope should not. we say? Um, but yeah, there's certainly been a, a leveling off, should we say, of yeah. uh, of, uh, of rate. So, Steve, just help our listeners understand what is a regulated agreement. This is a term you use a lot in your industry. That it's uh, consumer credit. Uh, regulated. Yes. Um, uh, what does that actually mean for the consumer? So a regulated agreement regulated by the Consumer Credit Act will be for a consumer only. Mm -hmm. uh, um, because it's regulated, there's certain benefits to the customer that take the regulated agreement, i.e. there's very set rules on early settlement of yep. the finance, very strict parameters that all funders have to work with. So this doesn't, just to be very clear, this is consumer, private individuals, it can be a, um, a sole trader customer would also uh, count as a uh, regulated finance agreement usually. Yep. But uh, a joint application, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, for example, would be a, a regulated agreement. So any consumer deal, so excluding limited company or business finance, which is not uh, regulated. So the big benefit here for the consumer is if you settle early. So we're talking about a 15-year term. I mm. don't know anyone that's owned the same motorhome for 15 years. Uh, yep. In reality, you're going to take finance for 15 years to get the monthly down. Yes. But you're probably going to sell it after three, two or three years. Potentially. Uh, yeah. uh, but you can do that with a regulated agreement, can't you? The pe there are penalties. Yes. Uh, which are regulated as well. Yes. Um, but you can settle early for a small fee. Just explain that for me a bit more. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's calculated on a sliding scale in terms of the interest charges, and there is a penalty. It's, it's the same with, um, if it's a regulated agreement, it's the same with all higher purchase agreements. Personal loans would come under this category as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, the customer would pay a fixed um, amount, depending on factors like how much they borrowed, of course, what the rate was, what period in the agreement, importantly, they're looking to settle as yes. well. But it's a calculation um, which the Consumer Credit Act um, dictates and all regulated funders, and this is the key, all regulated funders have to abide by that settlement. So it's not a case of, I may try this funder, they may give me better terms. Mm -hmm. um, it's fixed. But uh, some funders work in a different way when you settle early. So I, I know I can put up to £8,000 into a fund to pay off you know, a chunk of it. That's a, capped a, at eight a grand. A part isn't settlement, it? yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, but isn't it the case that the lender can choose whether that reduces my monthly payment or they reduce the term? Is that, that, is that the control and the whim of the lender? To some extent, but I suppose the, the advantage in working with a, a, a broker with a number of funders like ourselves is mm -hmm. that we've got, we know which funders have which rules. So you're right in saying some funders would perhaps only look to uh, reduce the monthly payment if you settled early yep. or part settled early. Some might look to reduce the term but keep the monthly payment the same. Yeah. And some funders, in fact, probably the majority now, um, allow the flexibility for the customer to do either of those. Okay. But if that's an important thing for the customer at the start of the agreement, knowing that two, three years down the line, they may want to part settle, um, and for example, they wanted to make sure the monthly payment reduced, we would make sure we went to that funder before the start of the agreement yes. and took the finance there. Um, clearly, we'd need to know that from the customer up front, which is an important thing for us because we like to speak to the customer, so hopefully, during our negotiation we uh, yes. and conversations, we, so, we, we understand that. So it's important then as a consumer, if, if I'm borrowing this money, I understand how I'm going to utilise it going forward. Yes. And if I intend to clear it early or clear a piece of it early, yep. 
what I want to happen to that lend. Do I want the monthly to come down? What's my agenda for, for paying off a piece of it early? Yes. So that that, that is a, that's the key question there. Mm. Is to, a customer will want a budget um, in terms of how they if, – if they know they're coming into chunks of money at a given period of time yeah. going forward – they need ideally to tell us up front most of the funders now as i say will give you the option of reducing a monthly payment or reducing the term um but you know anyone listening to this that wants to give us a call on that we, we can have that conversation with them and we can make sure we choose the appropriate fund yes and that's the benefit of working with a, a brokerage like yourselves yeah. is you have access to a massive panel of lenders don't you correct so how many lenders do you have at your disposal We've got over fifty, not all, wow. not all for the leisure space, no. um, because there's, there's a number of other things we do within our business. But we've got a, certainly a strong panel of lenders for for, for leisure vehicles, yeah. um, which we can call upon. Now we touched on camper van conversions earlier, yeah, uh, and they're a product we've seen a huge boom in of growth you know, in this marketplace. Massively, it's almost the case on every street corner. There's somebody converting a van <laughs> into a camper van. Yep. But you can lend on those as well. They don't have to be built in a factory or have to be NCC approved. We'll unpack that in another episode and what that means. Yep. But you can lend against a vehicle that you know to someone who's maybe built three a year. That's that's right, isn't it? It is. I mean, clearly. Some of the funders we work with will only fund camper vans that come off the production line as a camper van. So right. Let's say the VW California, for, for example. Yeah. Um, but we also have funders that, providing we get a, an order form um, for the vehicle, they can see the conversion work that's, that's, that's been done. We can fund a uh, a non, uh, you know, a retrofitted uh, mm-hmm. vehicle, if you like, that's that's been that's come off the, the factory floor as a van. Has been converted. We can fund those over over extended periods as well. 10, and even if it's back. been even if it's been a van for five years and then converted to a camper van, if, if the quality is good and mm-hmm. it's a it's a converter that the funder and ourselves are happy with, um, you know, we will do things like look at um, the Google reviews and make sure that it's a, a converter that is. Um, Known, reputable. Um, re- reputable. Um, we get we get a feel for these. There's many there's many sort of mid size converters. I would say that convert a number of vehicles a year. That um, and, and for for us they're they're fine in the yeah. in, in the main. And we have got options. What was interesting at the Manchester show, we were hanging out in some of the lodges that were there. Um, we were talking to Hayden at uh, North Wales Resorts, and their their lodges are amazing, they're beautiful. Yeah. Um, and there were guys there as well from from um, other campsites with, that had these huge lodges, these kind of static homes. Yep. Uh, and this is a boom part of our industry. And there seems to be the case these guys were explaining to me that a lot of people that are in a motorhome are getting to a state of life or an e- a stage of life, I should say, <laughs> um, and, and where they want to sell the motorhome and have a static. You can lend on those as well. We can, yeah. Um, we've got several different options. We, we've got high, for holiday lodges and statics. We've got uh, higher purchase options. For you know, as, as as you alluded to, some of these can be incredible money. These uh, these holiday lodges, you know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand pounds plus for some of these. Oh, uh, easy, yeah. Some of these things. Um, we can do longer term secured lending on those. So, if the customer, for example, this isn't a product for everybody, but we we have a number of customers that um, take it. We can secure lending against their main residential premises. Mm-hmm. Um, so, providing they've got equity in their residential premises, we can fund um, a holiday lodge over. 15, 20, even and what, 20, 25 what if they want years. to sell the bricks and mortar, move into the lodge full time? No. So the op- the offering for our uh, holiday lodges and static homes is not the customer cannot be moving into it as their permanent residential abode. Right. They have to have other other premises for that to work. Okay. Um, yeah. There's various laws behind that, um, but it's not it's not one for our our panel of funders. But yeah. anything which is for recreational use, uh, holiday purposes, um, is no problem whatsoever. Now we talked about regulated agreements. Let's just quickly talk about non-regulated agreements. Mm-hmm. So you were saying that a regulated agreement needs to be in a person's name. I want to set up a, a motorhome hire business. So I'm going to go and buy a motorhome and put it on hire. Yep. I've set up a limited company yep. and I'm going to put the motorhome in that and I'll put the finance in that. Or somebody wants to buy the motorhome and put it through their building business as an expense to that business. That becomes a non-regulated agreement, doesn't it? Just very quickly, Steve, just explain what people need to be aware of if they're considering doing that because it's a very different lend, isn't it? It is a different lens, so two aspects there. So non-regulated finance, 
more often than not is, is that for a limited company. Mm -hmm. Generally, the terms on offer are shorter, um, five, sometimes up to seven year finances on offer, possibly with a balloon as well, um, mm -hmm. if required. Um, a factor that we would to take into account, if you're, particularly if you're doing longer term finance, is the settlement, early settlement parameters are not as favorable. No. Um, uh, it, it's far more, with, with most funders, it's, it's far more penal to settle a non-regulated agreement early. I, so that's certainly something to take into account. I can vouch for that. I've yeah. caught a cold with that once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it, this, this is where the conversation with the customer is important at, at yes. outset. Um, we, we make it very clear what the, what the circumstances were. In terms of a hire, a, a, a new start um, hire business, motorhome hire, campervan hire, We've got lots of funders. Hire is quite specific. Some funders don't like hire because obviously, for the, for the obvious reasons, the vehicles are out with many different individuals. It's a yeah. bit more high risk for the funder. Where are the vehicles, you know? But from our point of view, yes, we can fund uh, hire companies and we do fund hire companies in the leisure space. We also fund hire companies in lots of other um, sectors that we work with as well. Really, all we need is some details of the company. We would want to see the hire agreement as well that mm -hmm. the customers would sign. Just make sure that's fairly watertight on the terms and conditions. Um, but yeah, lending to companies that wish to hire vehicles, no problem whatsoever. But the key is if you're putting the finance in the name of a limited company, it is automatically a non-regulated agreement and you need to be very informed on the penalties of settling that early. So choosing the right term is critical, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, so, some people, there's a trade-off, I suppose, there. You can take a very short-term uh, agreement and, and, and know you can you be, uh, it'll be paid in full within, say, a two-year period. However, the monthly payments may look unattractive. Yes. Um, so if what I would say is, you know, if you know they're only going to be um, you know, usable as a hire vehicle for two years, don't take out a six, five, six, seven year agreement. No. Um, but there, there perhaps is a trade off between the two there. Yes, you might be penalised on settlement, but you maybe as the business is getting up and running, the monthly payment may be more affordable over a slightly longer period. Yeah. But that's, that's a conversation to have with the customer. And that's the key, isn't it? And, yeah. and that's something I have to say. I've worked with you guys for years at Motomedar Finance. You've got a secret weapon in your office called Nicola, oh, who <laughs> is your wife. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, she once said to me that she tries to speak to every customer, which I still find incredible she to does, this day. She, she, yeah, she clearly doesn't have much time left to speak to me, but yes. No. She, <laughs> well, that's why she does it, Steve. <laughs> she keeps busy. That's why you're still yeah. married. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret? Yeah. Oh, work a lot. <laughs> but she does engage she, everyone in conversation. She does. And to be fair, it's, it's not just Nicola. Um, our, you know, all our other guys that, um, that work with our customers, uh, leisure vehicle customers, but other, other sectors as well, we, we try to to keep it personal you yeah you could argue perhaps a little bit a bit, bit old school in terms of an approach but um it, it's one that we like and, and we have lots of repeat customers off I, the back of it I, I maybe it's old school i think it's unique and i love it uh, and i think that's what sets you guys apart so yeah my help to you all um, and thank you for doing that it makes all the difference and and of course the the broader offering you you have the brand motome.finance yes which is part of creative funding solutions you do cars as well don't you so you not only do you fund the caravan you'll fund the car towing it 100 percent. yeah we've got lots of funders on cars high purchase pcp which is um personal contract purchase with a, a balloon payment i'm sure many of your listeners and, and viewers will be familiar with a pcp on yes on cars keeps the monthly payments down it's a guaranteed future value at the end of the finance um, it, um where they have options but again um if people want to want to uh, speak to us we're, we're more than happy to um, to give them some information on our, our car options. But it's not just the consumers you're serving, is it? You're now working with a lot of motorhome and car dealers too, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've, with, with a great panel of funders that we've got, we can work with, um, and we do work with a, with a lot of dealers. Customers come in, they're looking for finance options. You know, obviously, there's one or two names out there in the industry which have been long-standing in the leisure vehicle finance. Um, but you know, with the options we've got, um, we can really make it work for the for the dealer. Yeah. Um, some of the dealers like, or most of the dealers, in fact, like the personal approach that we've just talked about. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to. Yeah. You know, with some funders, the, the dealer has to just 
place details into a computer system and the computer says yes or no, we're more than happy to um, take the call from the dealer saying, can you please phone the customer? These are their details. This is what they're buying. Can you can you just own the process from here and um, basically just let us know when the finance is in place? Yeah, and take I, the hassle away. And we're, and we're more than happy to do that. And for, yeah, for dealers who are busy wanting to find more time to sell motorhomes and camper vans or caravans, that's, um, that's often welcome. Yeah, definitely. And it's all about the relationship. That's the bit that you guys really prioritise, and I've always appreciated that um, with me and also with our customers. Um, and that counts for a lot with me. But So, Steve, tell me, mm. Motown prices rocketing up, climbing up high, mm. interest rates have climbed. OK, they're settling down a little bit. Does this mean that people are queuing up for finance because they can't afford the motome otherwise? Or are they shying away from it thinking it's just all too expensive? Have you got big queues at your stands when you go to the show? Uh, or are you just, you know, tumbleweed passing by? No, uh, probably somewhere between the two. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> um, that's the, the easy answer. That's the easy answer. But the, 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 the truthful answer is, is, yes, we're still busy. I think the prices are the prices. And I think people's expectations perhaps move with those prices and yeah. now they can see the longer term options available um we're, we're as busy as ever on uh, on finance on on these assets um and because of the extra term lending we've got now i, I don't see that slowing down anytime soon good um obviously lead time of vehicles is is a factor yes um new vehicles um, which is perhaps why some people are looking to sort of later later used vehicles purely because of supply um but uh, but no we're, we're certainly still very busy so just quickly on the used bit yeah. the 15 year term is subject to a motorhome not being older than 20 years old at the end of that term isn't it that's important people understand that yeah some variation with with funders on that but as a maximum i would say um yeah so 20 years old at the end of the term so a 12 year old vehicle now for example mm -hmm. can be funded over an eight-year term etc yes. etc yeah um but um yes in in, in broad numbers um, again, depending on the age of the vehicle, that, that would be part of the conversation we'd have with a customer. We look at the age, how long they want to fund it over, and then we drive that deal down the most appropriate fund of course. path. Steve, you allude to lead times, yeah, uh, and that's been a massive issue in our marketplace, as you well know. Yes. Uh, and if I want to buy a Fiat Ducato with an automatic gearbox, nobody can tell me how long it's going to be. So finance proposals only last a certain time, don't they? So if I come to you today and say, Steve, I want to buy this £75,000 motorhome, I'm going to put twenty five in, but I need to borrow the rest. How yep. long is that offer going to last for? Because I might not see that motorhome for over a year. Mm. Good question. Um, the answer is, with, with the consumer funders, most of them is 30 days. So, in effect, the the approval will be long expired by the time the vehicle turns up. Mm -hmm. However, in 99% in of cases, unless there's been a fundamental change in the customer's circumstances yeah. um, to, the, to the detriment of the customer, um, we just seek a reapproval closer to the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, clearly, the, in terms of the interest rate as well, that would only be governed for the, the 30 days. And if 11 months down the line the vehicle is ready, then it would it would have to be at whatever suitable sort of prevailing rate at the time is. Which might have uh, gone up or gone down. Or Indeed, so so that's one to cons one to consider. Yeah. Um, but obviously, with cost of funds variations, there's no, no funder is going to hold the pricing for a year or more. Obviously, so for uh, someone listening or watching and they're thinking of ordering that motorhome, which might take six months or a year, is it worth them getting a proposal approved in principle now? I think so, because that, clearly that means that that they're that they're approved. They can go speaking to to dealers with with certainty that the yeah. finance is in place then they will know what the budget is and they'll know you know if i if i i can look at i've got this much budget a month over this number of months well i can go to these stands or i can go to these dealerships and look for vehicles up to this sort of level of screen yeah. price so they know what they uh, can or can't afford yeah definitely um and they know they're over the line with the finance or, although as you say and there might be a long lead time i think it's certainly better to know that the finance is completely approved at that yes. point yeah and there is a calculator on your website isn't there 
there is indeed nice and easy and that it's a calculator and the customer then can go to fill in full details for a full proposal which comes onto our systems and we get someone to call them if they want to go that next step as well and there's no obligation on the calculator you just put the numbers in and it gives you an indicative answer yeah ab- absolutely they're just it's very it's on it's on a sliding scale they just put the amount they want to borrow the term they want to borrow uh, an indication as to their credit rating of course not every customer knows that um, but it's enough to give them a guide and then if they wish to apply then we can obviously have the finer detail on the conversation yeah and where can people find that calculator steve what's the website it is very simply www.motorhome.finance easy motorhome.finance Finance. Uh, simple as that no .co.uk or anything uh, afterwards we, we've it's the it's the it's the dot finance brand so www.motorhome.finance brilliant simple Dead as easy. That. steve one last question are there any nasty surprises do you think on the horizon that consumers need to be aware of you've said this is an election year hmm. uh interest rates have been very turbulent on the climb but they're starting to normalize are there, are we in for any nasty surprises or is stability going to be the theme this year my personal opinion i think stability is likely to be the key this year i'd be very surprised if we see huge amounts of uh, pre-election uh, rate increases screen prices who knows and um, with the supply you know there, there could be some nasties in front of the, uh, in terms of the front end prices but if you're asking me specifically from the finance front um i can't see anything which is going to lead to too many issues um for the in the near term at least it sounds good i appreciate your optimism i'm with you <laughs> indeed <yeah. laughs> let's fill that glass indeed steve <laughs> steven blake uh from motorhome.finance thank you so much for joining Thanks, us mate. I appreciate it's it. been a pleasure to have you in the studio at last yes keep bumping into it, all these shows uh but it's great to welcome you here today uh, and appreciate if you are in the market for motorhome caravan or even car finance or static home finance then you know where to go motorhome.finance a great place to start that's Stephen Blake, the sales manager at Creative Funding Solutions. Interesting what he's saying there, Matt, because obviously, you know, he wants to lend and get the interest back. They, they've got to be in business. It's, it, yep. it's not good business for them turning people away, is it? No, of course not. But the great thing for any financier are the residual values of motorhomes. So we're finally seeing some stability back in the market, and that gives confidence. So for a lender, they are interested in what's the motorhome going to be worth in three, five, ten, fifteen years' time. And they want to know that it's worth more or then you owe them. Uh, and otherwise, they're coming after you for the difference. And motorhome residual values are staying strong, and there is no sign of them dropping. You know, lots of people are wishing they would, particularly those who are in the market for a 12-year-old motorhome. It's just not happening. New ones are becoming more and more expensive, um, so that becomes a bigger challenge for people wishing to borrow to buy one. But the residual staying strong means the market stays stable, and we so desperately need that to happen. Uh, and it's interesting that financiers are seeing that as well and have confidence, therefore, to lend. Uh, so, yes, it's a challenging time. That whole statement, again, too much month at the end of the money. Lenders are always very focused on your affordability. The FCA made sure that those rules were really enforced um, and that we're not over-borrowing, we're not over-stretching ourselves. That's really key. So my advice is if you're considering finance for your motorhome, then shop around. Make sure you pick a lender who understands this market. Yes, you can borrow money from any high street lender. Even supermarkets are now lending money as well, aren't they? Uh, But that may not be the right route for you. So definitely shop around um, and take the offer that's given to you by the dealership that you're looking to buy the motorhome from, but consider others as well. Uh, And there are many lenders like Steve and his team that will be able to help you. So go and talk to a few people. Absolutely. Uh, remember, that they, they want you to borrow the money, so they'll do their best at, within the guidelines to make sure it's affordable for you. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> it's the Motorhome Map Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Brought to you by ThatLeisureShop.com. It's our Q&A, our questions and answers. Matt's the expert. You ask the questions. If he doesn't know, he'll get somebody who does. Claire is in Wakefield, and she says, Hi, Matt and Keith. What are your thoughts on Ad Blue? This is this stuff that you add, isn't it, to, to cars? What does it do? It's an additive, so it's a lubricant. And it brings the emissions of your vehicle down. Ah, right. She says, I'm aware of it, but don't know when I should be topping up. I watch a lot of YouTubers, and some go as far as to take it with them and top up while on trips. Do I just wait for the vehicle to tell me it wants some or top up when I fuel up? Thank you for an amazing channel full of informative content. Oh, bless you, Claire. That's very kind. Thank you very much. And stickers. And stickers. (laughs) 
<laughs> always be a sticker knicker so claire ad blue is an additive that goes into many newer vehicles uh most i think now all fiat peugeot citroen and ford uh chassis require it you top it up next to the fuel filler cap uh by the passenger door uh, or wherever your fuel filler cap is but that's generally where they are uh and and you can carry it with you i'd recommend you do when the light comes on you've probably got between a thousand and fifteen hundred miles left to go the risk is you don't top it up and it runs out that little absolute tank runs out your engine will cut out it won't work without it um so really important you top it up before you get to the end of the tank and the dashboard will tell you that if you don't top it up you're going to get an annoying bing every time you start the engine and that annoying little light telling you that the ablu level is low so it's worth topping up if only for that reason you know ablu is often rumored to be made out of pig's urine did you know that pig's wee wee yeah <laughs> Exactly, Peppa Pig had a wee. Uh, but it's not true. It's not true. No. This rumour comes from it being 32.5% urea. Yeah, which you do get from urine. You, yeah, but why pigs? I don't know. We're not goats. <laughs> Are pigs easier to catch? I don't know. Why not aardvarks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got loads of those around. <laughs> why not goats? I don't know. But it's, it's, I don't know, Matt. Why not goats? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Why pigs? <laughs> it's just weird. Um, it's something that is... Urea is obviously something that's found in urine, but yeah. in much lower <laughs> concentrations. So it is 32.5% urea uh, and mineralised water. Okay? Oh. That's what Ad Blue is. It is not pig's urine. <laughs> they are just dispelling a myth. <laughs> no. Or any other. It's not aardvark urine either. Just in case you were asking the question. <laughs> Hope that's been of help. Maureen's in Auckland in New Zealand. Down under. Yeah, absolutely. About as far away from us as she can get. <laughs> I wonder why that is. Uh, love watching you and Keith on YouTube down here in New Zealand. My question is that we have a similar product to Solbio here called Biomagic. I have cleaned my to toilet bowl with a soap-based detergent, but I'm aware that chemicals degrade bio products in the cassette our motorhome is brand new and we want to keep the plastics fresh can you recommend a product i am loath to fill the bowl with thetford bowl cleaner thanks looking forward to hearing your answer so there you go matt maureen's down under in auckland in new zealand and she wants some information on her down under equipment <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know we reached that far uh, said the actress to the bishop <laughs> can I get away with that? <laughs> I think so, yeah <laughs> honestly, I often say this it's like working with my dad it's so true, honestly I'm sorry about that, Maureen but yeah, you, there is a product and I did some quick googling on this there's a number of products we have here in the UK that will clean your toilet bowl uh, that don't have any bleach in them that's the key because that's what kills off the effectiveness of Solbio. So Solbio is a pro-bacterial product that accelerates the rotting down of the poo and wee that you've put into the bowl, into the cassette, uh, whereas other chemicals are an anti uh, bacterial product and they slow it down and try and turn it into water so what you need is a biozyme product um, and i found one here i'm going to show it up on the screen for youtube watchers um, and it's actually from a company called waikato cleaning supplies i don't know who they are but i just did a quick google and this is a kiwi product it's called biozyme b-i-o hyphen z-y-m-e and it is a in-system toilet bowl cleaner 400 mil and it's totally bio-friendly probiotic like um, Solbio is so uh, you would be able to use that you can just use Solbio though to clean your toilet there's no reason why not just put it in a like a florist spray and spray that around the toilet bowl lots of people do that we do that in ours and it works really well just so a florist's one yeah a florist one any type of spray dispenser would do the job but try Solbio in the toilet bowl and if you find it's not smelling enough just a drop of essential oil into the liquid and it, your toilet smells beautiful and this stuff you're recommending 11.25 is the price they've got on it so uh, that's uh, new zealand dollars isn't it, it is yeah uh, so you know it's not expensive either is it? no not at all so i would firstly i would try Solbio in the toilet and see if that works it should do uh, and if you I'd say you want it to smell a bit stronger a bit of essential oil and it would make it smell lovely or curry powder lovely <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. if you've got a question for matt what do uh, people need to do then dead easy just head to mhmp.info forward slash 
Ask Matt. We'd love it if you recorded your question. Hit the orange button. Tell us where you are, or you can fill out the form, but drop your question in. I guarantee you there are 100 other people having the same question as you, so please don't be shy to ask it. Uh, leave us a review on mhmp.info forward slash review. That's motorhomemattpodcast.info forward slash review. And subscribe on our YouTube channel, which is sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. Oh. <sniffs>